नमस्कार बड़े हर्ष का विषय है कि कंटिन्यूंग वेटरनरी एजुकेशन प्रोग्राम के अंतर्गत और ही लाइफ साइंसेस कंपनी द्वारा सी एस आर मत के अंतर्गत कंटिन्यूंग वेटरनरी एजुकेशन प्रोग्राम का आयोजन किया जा रहा है जो कि हम सबके लिए बहुत अच्छा है और इसका जो विषय है वेटरनरी एक्पंचर एवं ट्रेडिशनल चाइनीज वेटरनरी मेडिसिन इस विषय पर थ्री बिग्स का जो ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम किया जा रहा है ये वास्तव में बहुत अच्छा है और पशु चिकित्सकों के लिए देश के उनको तकनीकी विज्ञान को उच्चतम शिखर पर ले जाना एवं नई तकनीकी ज्ञान के लिए बहुत आवश्यक है मैं कंपनी के एमडी डॉक्टर विशाल शर्मा का भी हृदय से अभिनंदन करता हूं कि हमारे बीच उन्होंने विश्व के प्रख्यात पशु चिकित्सक डॉक्टर स्टेरिन को आमंत्रित किया है मुख्य वक्ता के रूप में मुझे लगता है कि देश के समस्त पशु चिकित्सक जो भी इस ट्रेनिंग में भाग लेंगे वो इसका लाभ लेंगे आज के वर्तमान समय में ये बहुत बड़ी आवश्यकता है कि कंटिन्यूंग वेटरनरी एजुकेशन प्रोग्राम हर स्तर पे चलाया जाना चाहिए इसको सरकार की ओर से भी वेटरनरी काउंसिल की ओर से भी हमारे एन भी एसोसिएशन भी सभी लोग अगर इस पर फोकस करते हैं तो आने वाले समय में हम सब मिलके वेटरनरी प्रोफेशन को आगे ले जाने का काम करेंगे और ऐसी हमारी संस्थाएं ऐसी हमारी कंपनियां जो सी एस आर मन में जो काम कर रही हैं वेटनरी काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया की ओर से हम उनका हार्दिक अभिनंदन करते हैं कि हमारे पशु चिकित्सकों के तकनीकी ज्ञान को उच्चतम शिखर पर ले जाने के लिए एवं नई तकनीक जो भी नई तकनीक आ रही है उनका ज्ञान उनको हो जिससे पशुपालकों को भी लाभ मिलेगा देश के अंदर वन हेल्थ एक बहुत बड़ा इस वक्त विषय है कि एनिमल हेल्थ ह्यूमन हेल्थ इन्वायरमेंटल हेल्थ सभी की हेल्थ जब ठीक होगी तभी तब जब ही कल हमारा उद्देश्य पूरा होगा इसमें इस प्रकार कंटिन्यूंग वेटरनरी एजुकेशन के प्रोग्राम जो आयोजित किया जा रहा है उससे मुझे लगता है हम जो वन हेल्थ का जो कंसेप्ट है और हमारे पशुपालन में जो दिन प्रतिदिन नई तकनीकी आ रही है उसमें किसानों को पशुपालकों को भी लाभ मिलेगा और वन हेल्थ का जो हमारा कंसेप्ट है उसको भी हम पूरा करेंगे मुझे लगता है कि मैं पुनः ओरिजिनल लाइफ साइंसेस कंपनी को एवं उनके एमडी डॉक्टर विशाल शर्मा जी को का पुनः अभिनंदन करता हूं वेटरनरी काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया की ओर से कि आगे भी वो इस प्रकार के कार्यक्रम वेटरनियन के लिए आयोजित करेंगे तो मुझे हम सबको खुशी होगी और हम सब मिलके इस देश के अंदर पशु चिकित्सकों के तकनीकी ज्ञान को और उच्चतम शिखर पर ले जाने का काम करेंगे बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद ओके सो लेट्स स्टार्ट आवर Third webinar, so I'm very happy to see all of you again today. So this is our last webinar together. So let's start with the acupuncture for the geriatric patient. So in this uh, lecture, we will see like a lots of disease when acupuncture can be very useful. So in the title, it's about the geriatric patient, but of course you can uh, use this one also for the younger one. Huh? So this is all the disease or condition that we will see in this lecture. So let's start with the pain management. So this is something that you know quite well, like acupuncture is very useful like for all this uh, to control or to reduce the pain. So in case of hip dysplasia, of uh, degenerative joint disease or IVDD, the pets usually feel like, feel like some pain and then you want like to reduce this. So let's take an example with the pain in the hip area. So maybe he has a hip dysplasia and then he's feeling like really, it's really painful. So you can use, you remember our local point. So we have like, three points located really near like the heads of the femur. So really on the, um, on the hip area. So this is GB29, GB30 and bladder 54. And we have also by way, you remember, this is our permission point. Then we can use some distal points. So far away from the complaint. So of course we have bladder 11, which is like uh, related to the bone and it's quite far away from the, this hip area. Then we have bladder 23, Obviously, it's like the back shoe point for the kidney, which is related to the bone. So we have to use this one. Bladder 40, master point for the back leg. Liver 3 for the pain and stomach 36. You remember, this is a very important point. So once again, we just explain like the TCBM organ related to this issue will be kidney 
So we have the back shoe point bladder 23, master point for the hind area bladder 40, you remember in the center of the poplite. Local points, our three points, the bowling points, the anti pain points, we just uh, see them in the quiz, large intestine four on the front leg and liver three on the backside. And we have also a new point that we will learn now, bladder 60, which is called the aspirin point. So very useful to reduce the pain. So bladder 40, it's the master point for the caudal back and the hip. And it's an easy location. It's in the center of the popliteal crease at the um, hind, hind leg. Okay, so this is like, of course, two points in each uh, leg. And it's quite an easy one to locate. So our three boiling points. So we have GB29 in a depression just cranial to the greater trochanter, bladder 54 in a depression just dorsal to the greater trochanter of the femur, and GB30 in a depression midway between the greater trochanter and the tuber ischi. So in fact, it's three points that you have like on the top of the head of the of the tibia of the femur, sorry. And it's called the boiling point because because it's like the, the way you put your three finger, it's the same way as you put this finger to take the boiling boil. So that's why you have your head of the femur and you put your three points on top of the head and you have the location of these three boiling points. And of course we have by way, which is also a local point for the hip area because it's also located on the dorsal midlines between the lumbar seven and the first sacral. And it's also, you know, a permission point. So like the first needle that you will put in your pets. And it's also very useful for any hind leg issue. This, I just put this slide to uh, like, uh, for you to remember all the back shoe points and like uh, the association with the meridian or the TCVN organ. So of course you see like bladder 23, it's related to the kidney. And the bladder 60, you, we just talked about this one. It's like, it's called the aspirin point. So this one, it's in the thin fleshy tissue between the lateral malleolus and the calcaneus, level with the tip of the lateral malleolus. And in fact, this one is just opposite to kidney three. So you remember, we learned kidney three, very useful for any yin deficiency pattern. And you remember at that time, I told you like that kidney three, it's in the medial side. And this bladder 60, it's the same location, but on the lateral side. And you remember, I told you, like you can even put your needle through the skin. And then in this case, you will, you will stimulate bladder 60 and also kidney three. And bladder 60, it's a very useful point because it's really, it will help to release the pain. That's why it's calling like the aspirin point. To go further, of course, you always have to get your TCVM pattern. Obviously, if it's more like a deficiency of chi, the dog will be very tired, like he has some exercise intolerance, then you have to use our couple uh, stomach 36, large intestine 10 and GB14. If you have like uh, pets who is looking for the cold area, who is feeling quite hot, then you will have maybe a deficiency of yin. In this case, you have to use spleen 6, kidney 3, and again, bladder 23. If it's more like a chi deficiency, but with cold sign, like your pets, the back is really, really cold. Then you can use moxa on GV4, GV3, and by way. Of course, stagnation of energy, it's like pain for the pets. So obviously you have to use liver four on the backside and large intestine three on the front leg. The acupuncture for arthritis, it's almost the same thing, obviously, because Either you have like some arthritis in the hip area. So again, we can use all these local points that we just learned, the boiling point. But if you have like some arthritis on the elbow, of course you use points around this place. So like large intestine 10, triple heater 10. And always you use your distal points. So like bladder 40, bladder 60, because as we just explained, it's very good for the pain and liver three. For the neck pain, Again, we have this slide, but I will just go through this one because the next lecture will be about IVDD. So we will see this in detail. So the same for the back pain and IVDD. 
I just put this for your reference, but we will talk about this in the next lecture. This is just like an example of a dog who was having like uh, some like paralysis at the backside. And uh, we suspect he has like uh, poisoning from something. And then with uh, only two or three acupuncture sessions, he was able to walk again and he was not feeling pain anymore. So just again, just to, uh, for your reference and to see that we can have like really good results. Huh? And he was also like having some uh, deafness issue and blind from this toxic. We, we, we didn't know exactly what happened, but only with acupuncture, he was able to see and hear again. So acupuncture for heart failure, this, of course, you have a lot of Western medicine, very useful medicine that obviously you have to use. But some cases, either the owner is like against the Western drugs or it's not enough and the patient is really, really sick and you want to have some more treatment, then, of course, you can now use your acupuncture. So which point will you use for this? But the back shoe point for the pericardium, which is bladder 14, and the back shoe point for the heart, which is bladder 15. Again, if it's coming like for an emergency like coma, you remember we can use GV26 and you can add kidney one, large intestine 10 and stomach 36. Now acupuncture for chronic renal failure. This is uh, also something that you have some Western medicine available, but this is usually the old dog. He's having this kidney issue and they are like uh, sometimes really sick. They are not eating because they feel nauseous and uh, like the Western medicine sometimes is not enough or the owner doesn't want to give him more medicine. They want to leave him alone, but they still want a good life for the pets. So we can really help this, these cases. Huh? So this is the basic points that you have to use for any chronic renal failure. Once again, the renal failure in Chinese medicine is related to the TCVM organ, the kidney one. So of course you can use the bladder 23 because it will be like really useful to treat the kidney. Then you can use the kidney three on the kidney meridian, which is the source point, and the kidney seven, which is the mother point. And you remember from the first uh, lecture, we say if we have a deficiency, we have to tonify the mom. So this kidney seven, it's also important. Then we have kidney 10, which is called the EC point. We didn't learn this, but it's useful like for the fluid. So in chronic renal failure, we understand that there is a notion of fluid, so we can use this kidney 10, and we can also use bladder 22, which also help to move the fluid. The same uh, thing, we can use Schengen if the dog is not eating, and we can use bladder 39. This is more like for the urinary incontinence patient. So bladder 39, this is a new point, so it's very easy to locate this one because we just learned bladder 40, in the center of the popliteal crease and bladder 39 is just lateral to bladder 40. So it's on the lateral end of the popliteal crease on the medial border of the biceps femoris tendon. So again, it's a huge description, but it's easy if you have bladder 40 in the middle, just lateral, you have bladder 39, which is very useful. So for kidney failure and also like for any uh, urinary incontinence, this is the points that you have to, uh, to put. So let's go now to the urinary incontinence. So we just say that we have to use bladder 39, which is a very important point. Of course, we have to use bladder 22 because we just explained that it uh, regulates the fluid. So it will be important in this condition. Bladder 23, obviously, it's the back shoe point for the kidney. And we can also tonify the kidney chi. So we have to use kidney 3 on the kidney uh, meridian. So bladder 22, this is also a new point that we uh, discovered today. So useful like for the fluid because it's the back shoe point for the triple heater. And the triple heater, it's a meridian and it's um, very useful for the notion of fluid in the body. So I don't go into detail, but this is like the point useful for this condition. And it's located on the dorsal. So again, easy to locate and easy to put the needle in. 
one and a half cone lateral to the caudal border of the spinous process of the first lumbar vertebra. So it's just between bladder 23, so for the kidney, and bladder 22 for the stomach, so uh, bladder 21, sorry. Then we have bladder 22, which is useful for these kidney uh, failure cases or for the urinary incontinence. Kidney 3, again, I think we already uh, talked about the location, but just to remind you, it's in the thin fleshy tissue between the medial malleolus and the calcaneus level with the tips of the medial malleolus. And you remember, we just learned that opposite on the lateral side, we have bladder 60. Now for the gastrointestinal pattern. I guess all these points, now you know them very well, like if the dog is having some appetite issue, some anorexia pattern, then obviously we have to use our Schengen, top of the nose, bladder 20, bladder 21, and stomach 45. In case of vomiting, we use PC6 and still better 2021. Diarrhea, we use GV1. Constipation, it's the same point. So you remember around the, between the anus and the top of the tail. And of course, if you have some pain condition, large intestine 4 and liver 3. So these points are very important for any kind of pain. So we just saw before for any arthritis, you can use this, but also like for intestinal or abdominal pain, we can still use this couple of points. So let's see in a case, it will be easier for you to understand. So we have a cat, is a 12 years old cat and he's suffering from a chronic IBD. He has a poor appetite, he's having diarrhea, he's uh, losing weight. His tongue is pale, so pale color. The pulse is weak at uh, both sides, but it's even weaker at the right side. And his constitution is like a hearse cat. So you remember, hearse, you already know that he can have some imbalance in the spleen. So this cat, obviously, he's having a deficiency pattern because it's a 12 years old cat, so it's an old patient, and also he's suffering from a chronic IBD, so since a long time. So he's having a deficiency in which TCVN organ, of course, easy, it's in the spleen because he's earth constitution and he's having a loss of appetite and he's having diarrhea. And it's in this case, a typical chi deficiency because he's very weak, he's losing weight, he's very tired. So no temperature preference in this patient. So he's suffering from a spleen chi deficiency. So what point can we use? We can use our permission point by way. Then we can use the chi tonic, so stomach 36. We can uh, add his friend large intestine 10 on the front leg. Of course, we have to use our back shoe point for the spleen and stomach, bladder 20, bladder 21 on the dorsal area, so easy to apply. And we can use GV1 to stop the diarrhea. And if the cat allowed, we can even inject some B12 in this point. And then the cat was doing very well after I think we did like a three session within three, four days interval and the diarrhea stopped and it was eating well. Of course, we have to do like a maintenance session. Like we used to see him once every couple of three months, depending on the situation. But then it doesn't need to get any Western drugs for that. So now for behavior issue, again, this you can use for the younger patient, it's the same. So in Chinese medicine, the behavior issue is related to the shun, and the shun also is related more like to the heart TCVM organ. So in this case, we have to use like heart 7, Han Shen, Da Feng Men, bladder 15. And this is the point more like for the all the separation anxiety case that you can have. So the shen, it's like the spirits or the mind in Chinese medicine. And I uh, just told you it's related to the heart because the shen is stored in the heart and it's nourished by the heart, the blood and the yin. So usually when we have like some uh, disturbance of the shen, we have the animals that cannot stay quiet. There are a lot of anxiety. They can have some insomnia, like some uh, thunderstorm phobia. And all this in Chinese medicine, usually the pattern is like some deficiency in the heart, deficiency of qi, of yin, of blood. 
So that's why we have to use the hot seven, so located on the meridian hot, PC6, so PC for pericardium, and Hang Shen to calm the Shen. So hot seven, again, it's an easy location. It's called like the lucky point. Like if you study more acupuncture and then you have to do some exam, then maybe you have to uh, find like uh, 20 points on the body. And if you get heart seven, you are lucky because it's really a very huge depression. So that's why we call him the lucky point. So it's on the transverse crease of the carpal joint in the large depression lateral to the tendon of the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle and caudal to the tendon of the ulnaris laterus muscle. So it's like in the huge depression on the lateral side, just on top of the feet. So here you can see on the picture. So it's really easy to locate and usually it's easy also to put the needle in this place. So this will treat any shun disturbance, insomnia, anxiety. On Shen, uh, we learned this before, it's the biggest point behind the heels. So Either you can just put the dry needle or you can still inject like some B12, do some aqua acupuncture. And this point, it's very useful to calm the shun and also for all the wind, like for all the scratching animal. OK. So that's why now we are coming for the dermatologic condition. Acupuncture, it's maybe not something that you think about to treat your dermatologic condition. But it can be really useful because in these skin cases, usually it's like uh, the headache cases, like it's really difficult. You give some medicine, they get better for a while, but then the issue is coming again and again. And the owner sometimes is fed up to give him the medicine and he wants to really find alternative treatment for the pets. So now you will have this new tool in your hand and you can still really use acupuncture to help this patient. So in Chinese medicine, this I listed all the points that are very useful for this condition. You remember it's a condition. I mean, we have a lot of wind in these cases, like the wind invite the body and then we have to get rid of this wind. So we can use all these points, GB20, Dafeng Man, Bladder 12, which is the influential point for wind. Then in this case, sometimes we have some pain problem because it's so itchy that the dog is feeling pain. So he's hurting himself. So obviously we can use our liver three large intestine four. Then we say in Chinese medicine that if we nourish the blood, then the wind will commit suicide. So of course, we just say we want to get rid of the wind. So we can like stimulate this uh, blood point, which is spleen 10 and bladder 17. And if we nourish this blood, then the wind will commit suicide. And then no more wind, your patient will feel better. Of course, we have to calm them. So we can use, you remember, Anshen, very useful point. Then in some condition, you know, the skin is very red, it's very hot. So we have to clear this excess of heat. So you can use our large intestine four and large intestine 11 points. If we have like a yin deficiency, the skin is very dry, a lot of dandruff, then we can add spleen six, spleen nine. If we have a lot of damp, like in the, um, like dermatitis, like it's uh, wet and it's smelly, then we can use stomach 40. And again, if we have really a lot, lots of heat, it's really red, then we can use our Aegean points. So this is the blood points. So we have spleen 10. This is a new point for today. So the location is approximately one patella lens proximal to the top of the patella and then one patella lens caudal. So it's on the medial face of the back leg. So you can find your patella, you just measure the patella and then you go one patella in and one patella up. And then you will find your spleen 10, which is very useful for blood deficiency patterns. So in this case, it's like we tonify the blood so the wind will die and will go away. And uh, his friend is bladder 17, is the back shoe point for the diaphragm, but the influential point for blood. So very useful also for the blood deficiency. So bladder 17, once again, it's on the bladder meridian, so on the dorsal side, and it's one and a half cool lateral to the caudal border of the spinous process of the seventh thoracic vertebra. 
now a very huge part, and I think this for you maybe is more familiar, to use acupuncture for the cancer patient. So in TCVM medicine, the root of all the cancer patient is coming from the spleen. So the TCVM pattern will always be a spleen chi deficiency. This is really the root of the cancer. And then depending on the mass that you will have, like if you have a big mass and uh, it's painful for the pets, you can have some flame and blood stasis. And if the, the mass is like um, inflamed, it's really smelly, then we can even go to a heat toxin. But the root, it's really the spleen chi deficiency. So obviously, which point you have to use, you have to tonify your chi. So you have to use all these points. Stomach 36, large intestine 10, CV 17, lung 7, lung 9. Again, you have to tonify the spleen chi. So transform the flank. So you have to tonify the spleen with bladder 20, bladder 21, stomach 36, stomach 40. You have to boost the immune function. So you can use GB14, large intestine 10, large intestine 4, and 11. And you have to smooth the liver chi to relieve the pain because in this patient, you can have, it can be painful for them. So once again, we can use liver three on the backside, large intestine four in the front leg. So CV17, which is very useful for the chi because it's called the influential point for chi. It's on the ventral midline. So it's in the depression at the level of the four intercostal space. So a tip to find these points uh, faster, it's like when the dog is in the standing position, you throw, you draw um, a line like the, it's in the middle, the, you, it's, uh, sorry, it's in the midline, but it's on the line of the middle of the elbow. So you just draw a line between the middle of the elbow and just at the midline position, this is where you are CV 17. So this is easier like to find when the dog is standing up, because otherwise you have to put them on the ventral position. Sometimes it's not so easy. So CV17, it's very useful. But of course, if it's too difficult to locate or to use this point, you can still use stomach 36, large intestine 10. You can use also your acupuncture for the side effect of the chemotherapy. Like some patients, they will go under the chemotherapy, but still they have a lot of side effects. Usually they have some anorexia issues, so you can use your Schengen, or they can be vomiting, or they can have some diarrhea or some ossitis. So here I just listed the useful point for all these side effects. In this study, so we just uh, check the um, benefit of acupuncture with some scientific studies. So in uh, Florida, they studied 10 dogs and five cats. So this patient, they all have some lymphoma issue. And uh, we use either only chemotherapy, only TCVM, or we mix TCVM and the chemotherapy. So the best result you can see was like the mix of the Western medicine and the TCVM. They were able to live for two to four years. But you see that if you do only chemotherapy, they lived for an average of one year. But if you do only TCVM, it's almost the same duration, like almost one, uh, 12 months or one year for cats. But the quality of life was better because no side effect from the chemotherapy. So you see, it's really depending on the solution that you have and depend on the pets and depending on what the owner wants. But obviously, if you can mix both, you will have the best results. This is just some information about the basic herbal uh, formula that you can use for cancer, because as I say, the roots of the cancer is the spleen chi deficiency. So we can always use this wet chi booster. It's a formula to boost the immune system. Then we have two formula like to fight the mass. So we have the max formula. And we have a stronger one, which is stasis breaker. So depending on how your patient is, if he's too weak, don't use this stasis breaker, just stick to the max formula. And sometimes you can use also a formula like to transport the herb to the location of your cancer. <laughs>
endocrine disorder, once again, you have a lot of Western medicine available. So I just put this for your information because in some cases, like the like I have some good results for Cushing and uh, some dog, like they are not reacting very well with the medicine available. And then we can still help them with the acupuncture. But in this case, we really have to go further and also had and the correct herbal formula. And we can like, help them without having any Western drugs, but this is like at the advanced level. No? So let's study some cases. So the first one is a skin allergy dog. So we have a Bichon Frise, he's four years old and he's itching for almost four years. So he is always taking some medicine and he even needs to uh, get the Busta Cola because he's scratching all day, all night. His skin is very dry, he has lots of dandruff, his body feels hot, and the skin is red and very hot. So the TCVM diagnosis for this case was like a blood deficiency because it's so deficient in his yin that it's even causing a deficiency of the fluid of the blood. That's why the skin is so dry that he has the large dandruff. We have also some damp heat, and of course we have wind. So the first day, this dog was coming to see us not to get any acupuncture treatment, just like on the basic consultation. But still, we use one point. You remember, Anshen. We inject B12 on the, um, behind the heel, and the dog stopped itching for 12 hours. So the owner was really happy. He was relieved that finally the dog was not itching all the night, and he was able to sleep. So he was happy with the result with just one needle. And then he was also he agreed to try more acupuncture treatment. So he came back the next day to do this time just a TCVM consultation. So for him, what we use? We use some point for the blood deficiency. You remember, we just learned this couple of points, bladder 17 and spleen 6. We want to clear the wind. So again, we have to use GB20, Dafengmen, Hanshen, and then we want to clear the heat. So GB14, large intestine 11, large intestine 4. For this case, we had some herbal formula, and we also advise about the food because the owner was feeding him with the home cooked diet. So we ask him to give some cooling food, like the turkey, to give him some brown rice, tofu, Bony, broccoli, sorry, and bananas and watermelon. After two weeks, it was 80% better. So really in skin condition, you can sometimes cure the disease. Of course, it's not the easy case. Like if you use your basic acupuncture, you can really help like uh, stop the dog to scratch for a while. So it can be like useful to combine with your Western medicine. But if you go further and if you really have the correct TCVM diagnosis and if you had the correct herbal formula, it will change over the time. You see in this case, before you will use the damp heat skin, then we have to switch to external wind, then we have to switch to another one, meaning we need really like to have maintenance session. We have to check the tongue color, we have to check the pulse to see because our pattern can change over the time. And in skin condition, it's very useful to really get the correct pattern and to give the correct herbal formula to really treat the condition. So it takes time. You need to have a lot of knowledge, but it's something possible. But at the basic level, you see, you can still, like he's coming just for a normal consultation, but he's scratching a lot. You can still put some points. So for a while, the dog will stop scratching himself and then everyone will feel better. Let's see now an example about uh, cancer condition. So we had 11 years old mixed breed with a large hepatic mass. So he come to see you and the owner refused biopsy. So he doesn't want to go under uh, other exam. He just want like you to help the dog to feel better because today the dog is not eating anything. He is having diarrhea, he's vomiting, he's cool seeking and he's also very, very tired. So what can you do with this? Your diagnosis was a spleen chi deficiency with a liver blood stasis and heat because he was cool seeking. 
So we use some dry needle at GV20, GV14, liver 13, 3 and 4, stomach 36, 40 and spleen 6. And we did just one electroacupuncture at bladder 20, 21 because we want a quick response. Dog is really in bad situation, in bad condition. So anyway, you have to try something because the owner doesn't want to go further and to do more exam. And for him, we gave him the Wachi booster, of course, to boost his immune system and the liver happy. So you can just understand with the name of the formula that it will transport the herbs to the liver where the mass is. And we gave this one for three months. After three months of treatment, the stool was okay, was normal, no more diarrhea. He was eating, he was more active. And we continued to see him every couple of months and he had a good quality life for two years. Of course, you cannot save him. Like, of course, he will die from the cancer, but at least he can have a few more months or a few more years and he can live quite well. He can have a good quality of life. So this is really, really useful. Another cancer case, this is Kiwi. So Kiwi was a 13 years old dog and uh, he was diagnosed. So this one, he went before at other clinics. So he had like uh, some uh, um, complementary exam and uh, um, he was diagnosed with a high grade mastocytoma uh, at the backside. And he already had a surgery to remove the mass and they uh, did the toes amputation. So he was having some dermipred therapy. So this is the first time he came to see us just to get the TCVM uh, medication I and mean, consultation. So he was a very sweet dog. So his constitution was a hearse. And sometimes also he was suffering from his back because he was quite an old dog. So the mass came back at the rear leg, even if he already had the amputation of the toes and uh, the lymphatic node was enlarged at the backside. He didn't have any temperature preference, but it was still like it, he was really tired at that time. So we diagnosed him with a typical spleen sheet deficiency. So at that time, the owner came to see you because the um, basic vet where they used to go, tell them that maybe the dog uh, after one month he will just die and then it's better to put him to sleep because they did the first amputation. The mass came again, so there is no hope for that dog. So that's why they came to see me. So which points I use for him? Of course, by we as a permission point, then bladder 20, 21, because we want to stimulate his spleen. Bladder 23, because he has some back pain, so I just had this needle. Stomach 36, large intestine 10 to boost his chi and liver 3 because it's, I guess it was a little bit painful for him. We use electro. Then I gave him also, I combined always with the herbal therapy for the cancer patient, which he booster really to boost his immune system and then the max formula to fight directly the mass. Second session, the lymphatic nodes were already the the size reduced. He was less tired. The vitality was there. So we continue the air ball and the acupuncture session. So every two weeks for five months, he was doing very well. So you see, he was supposed to die after one month and five months later, he was good, but with a good quality of life. But suddenly after five months, the lymphatic compression came back at the backside and it was like really huge. So they check again at the uh, basic vets. And once again, the vets wanted to put the dog to sleep because that day, suddenly the backside was very big and it was not standing up, not eating, and it was in pain. So they still come to see me and ask if I can help him, if I can do my session. I explained that, okay, I can still do acupuncture today, but the dog was really in pain, was like, not standing up, he was like almost at the end of his life. Like we tried the best for five months, but today I was not very confident. So I explained them that we can still do the session, but then I will give some energy to the dog and then he will choose what he wants to do. Because even to die, like the body needs some energy. And sometimes they don't have this little energy, enough energy to die. And then they just suffer waiting 
for the end. So I explained that we can do the session. I will offer him this uh, extra energy and he will choose. Either I will take this energy to pass away, I will take this energy to fight again and to feel better. I was not very confident and I was thinking maybe he will take this energy to pass away. But no, nope. in the same evening, the dog was standing up and he was eating. So for the um, appetite issue, I put the Schengen needle and really the same day he was standing up and he was eating. So we continue the session once a week this time, not every two weeks, but once a week. And he continued to live for two more months. And during these two months, he was feeling very well. He was eating well, he was uh, running, he was really doing properly, like he was having a good quality of life. So in total, we help him to live eight more months with a good quality of life. So this case was important just to show you that this dog was supposed to be uh, to put to sleep at the first uh, time. And for eight more months, he was happy and the owner was happy to have this extra time with the, with the dog. And it's also a useful case just to explain you like this notion, like sometimes the acupuncture can help the dog to make the decision. Like some cases, they will come to see you because they try everything and the dog is almost dead and they come to see you. You really, in this case, if the dog is really, really weak, you have to explain them that, okay, I can try, but he's so weak that maybe I will just offer him the extra energy to pass away. So you really have to explain this to the customer, to the owner of the dog. Because sometimes also they can, they may ask you to help the dog in this case, like a really, really sick pet is suffering and they don't want to use like the, like to put the medicine, like to put him to sleep. But maybe with your acupuncture, you can help him to pass away in a good condition. So this is also something like uh, important to know and to keep in mind if you see like a very, very weak pets coming for acupuncture, you have to explain to the owner that maybe this will be like just to help him to pass away. Now let's see some case, uh, dermatologic case. So this is you, he's a greyhound, he has an alopecia issue and he is suffering from multiple skin allergy. And he's also, we had a suspicion of color dilution alopecia for him. So he was really losing almost all his hair on his back. And the first time I saw him was in March, 2019. So we used to do acupuncture session every one to two weeks. So this was mostly for the skin allergy because he was taking skin allergy medicine almost every time because as soon as the owner stopped the medicine, the dog was having skin issue the next day. So after, like you see, March from August 2019, so a few months later, it was not necessary for him to take any Western medicine. And since March also, the good thing that the hair was coming back. So no need to take any uh, skin allergy medicine and uh, the hair was coming again. And uh, just to go further, this dog was diagnosed with alopecia. His skin was red and the body was feeling hot. So he had some dermatitis. So it was really inflamed. He has even the red eyes and he was easily scared. His skin was very dry and his paws was cracked. His tongue was purple, his pulse was weak. So the diagnosis for him was like an internal heat due to a liver yin and blood deficiency with wind. Always we have this notion of wind. So what we wanted to do, we wanted to enrich the liver, to nourish the blood and the yin, and to dispel the wind and the heat. So for him, we did some dry needle at Hanshen, Dafengmen, GB20 for the wind, bladder 10, 18, splint 10, bladder 17 for the um, tonify the blood, heart 7, kidney 3, bladder 23, by way, and liver 4, uh, large intestine 4, liver 3 for the pain. We inject also during the first session some aqua, so some vitamin B12, so you see just a little, uh, 0 0.2 milliliters at unction, so behind the hair. And we give him some herbal formula and we advise some food therapy. So this was a picture of before. You see almost no hair, 
And after a few months, you see the hair were all coming back. So once again, this is like quite a difficult cases. Like uh, you have to study maybe a little bit more to really get the correct pattern, but it's just to, to show you like the, the power of the acupuncture and the herbal formula for these dermatologic cases. So the case uh, that we are studying now is Amo, is a 16 years old poodle, so really a geriatric patient, and he was suffering from a kidney failure, stage three. So he was feeling tired, his uh, blood uh, parameter like creatinine and urea, they were elevated. He was cool seeking, his skin was dry, and he was sometimes suffering from anorexia. So like he was eating for a while, and then the next few days not eating anything. His tongue was red and the pulse was weak. So the TCVM pattern for him was a kidney yin and qi deficiency. So which point we use for him? Again, our permission point by we GV20. Then we use some electroacupuncture at bladder 23, bladder 39, bladder 22 for the fluid, kidney 3, 7, and 10, stomach 36, large intestine 10 for the qi, sheng su, and bladder 20, 22, plus an shen, uh, shengen, sorry, this is a mistake, shengen, when the appetite was low, to stimulate his appetite. About the herbal formula, just uh, for your reference, we use Rimania 11 for the kidney chi and yin deficiency, eight gentlemen when the appetite decreased. So once again, during all the session, we always check exactly the pattern of the day, and then we can uh, advise which herbal formula or if we have to combine the two formulas. We also give some food advice for him. So in this, uh, slide you can see like the value of the creatinine and urea for the first time oops sorry for the first uh, i went too fast the first visit and the last one is in 2019 the last blood test so you see we had 350 then we went to 175 in the middle you can see that it was going up a little bit because this dog was living with his sister dog which has the same uh, same um, age but uh, the sister uh, dog died. So at that time, the value went a little bit higher, but still we were not at the first, uh, the first value. Huh? So you see just at that time, he was not taking any Western medicine. So only with the acupuncture plus the herbal formula, we were able like to reduce and then he was not in stage three anymore. So this was really, really useful because he was an old dog and the owner didn't want to give him any Western medicine, but we were still able to help him to have a good quality of life. And he was not suffering from his kidney failure and the appetite was, uh, was good with the herbal formula. He was not having any anorexia issue anymore. So here is a move. So in conclusion to this lecture, it was just to give you an idea of the treatment. Once again, it's really an individual medicine. So it's really depending on the patient and also on the practitioner. Always you will have better results if you have the correct TCVM pattern. This is always the case. You have to adapt the frequency also to the case and always you need maintenance session. So you really have to explain this to the customer that okay, even if you have like a paralyzed patient, after a few sessions, you are very lucky the dog is walking again. That's great, but still they have to continue to see you on the, and you have to adapt the frequency together with the owner, but still they need the maintenance session because otherwise maybe one day it can get paralyzed again. And you have always better result if you combine the herbal medicine with acupuncture and also the food therapy. And you, once again, you can really sometimes cure the skin condition, something that you cannot do with the Western medicine. But once again, these cases are not the easy, um, the easy one. No?